So Gerda has just been brought to the Snow Queen's palace. Um, and uh, it sounds like she's off to find Kay. Um, we continue in part seven for the fifth video <laughs> of this series of the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. This is the seventh story. What happened in the Snow Queen's palace and what came of it? The walls of the palace were driven with snow. The windows and doors were the knife-edged wind. There were more than a hundred halls, shaped as the snow had drifted, and the largest of these extended for many a mile. All were lighted by the flare of the northern lights. All of the halls were so immense and so empty, so brilliant and so glacial. There was never a touch of gaiety in them, never so much as a little dance for the polar bears, at which the storm blast could have served for music, and the polar bears could have waddled about on their hind legs to show off their best manners. There was never a little party with such games as Blind Bear's Buff or Hide the Porkerchief for the Cubs, nor even a little afternoon coffee over which the white fox vixens could gossip. Empty, vast and frigid were the Snow Queen's halls. The northern lights flared with such regularity that you could time exactly when they would be at the highest and lowest. In the middle of the vast, empty hall of snow was a frozen lake. It was cracked into a thousand pieces, but each piece was shaped so exactly like the others that it seemed a work of wonderful craftsmanship. The Snow Queen sat in the exact centre of it when she was at home, and she spoke of this as sitting on her Mirror of Reason. She said this mirror was the only one of its kind, and the best thing in all the world. Little Kay was blue, yes, almost black with the cold, but he did not feel it, because the Snow Queen had kissed away his icy tremblings, and his heart itself had almost turned to ice. He was shifting some sharp, flat pieces of ice to and fro, trying to fit them into every possible pattern, for he wanted to make something with them. It was like the Chinese puzzle game that we play at home, juggling little flat pieces of wood about into special designs. Kay was cleverly arranging his pieces in the game of ice-cold reason. To him, the patterns were highly remarkable and of the utmost importance, for the chip of glass in his eye made him see them that way. He arranged his pieces to spell out many words, but he could never find the way to make the one word he was so eager to form. The word was eternity. The Snow Queen had said to him, If you can puzzle that out, you shall be your own master, and I'll give you the whole world and a new pair of skates. But he could not puzzle it out. Now I'm going to make a flying trip to the warm countries, the Snow Queen told him. I want to go and take a look into the black cauldrons. She meant the volcanoes of Etna and Vesuvius. I must whiten them up a bit. They need it, and it'll be such a relief after all those yellow lemons and purple grapes. And away she flew. Kay sat all alone in the endless, empty, frigid hall and puzzled over the pieces of ice until he almost cracked his skull. He sat so stiff and still that one might have thought he was frozen to death. All of a sudden, little Gerda walked up to the palace through the great gate that was a knife-edged wind. But Gerda said her evening prayer. The wind was lulled to rest, and the little girl came on into the vast, cold, empty hall. Then she saw Kay. She recognised him at once and ran to throw her arms around him. She held him close and cried, Kay, dearest little Kay, I found you at last. But he sat, still and stiff and cold. Gerda shed hot tears, and when they fell upon him, they went straight to his heart. They melted the lump of ice and burned away the splinter of glass in it. He looked up at her, and she sang, Where roses bloom so sweetly in the vale, there you shall find the Christ child without fail. Kay burst into tears. He cried so freely that the little piece of glass in his eye was washed right out. Gerda! He knew her and cried out in his happiness, My sweet little Gerda, where have you been so long, and where have I been? He looked around him and said, How cold it is here, how enormous and empty. He held fast to Gerda, who laughed until happy tears rolled down her cheeks. Their bliss was so heavenly that even the bits of glass danced about them and shared in their happiness. When the pieces grew tired, they dropped into a pattern that made the very word that the Snow Queen had told Kay he must find before he became his own master and received the whole world and a new pair of skates. Gerda kissed his cheeks, and they turned pink again. She kissed his eyes, and they sparkled like hers. 
she kissed his hands and feet, and he became strong and well. The Snow Queen might come home now, whenever she pleased, for there stood the order for Kay's release, written in letters of shining ice. Hand in hand, Kay and Gerda strolled out of that enormous palace. They talked about Grandmother, and about the roses on their roof. Wherever they went, the wind died down, and the sun shone out. When they came to the bush that was covered with red berries, the reindeer was waiting to meet them. He had brought along a young reindeer mate, who had warm milk for the children to drink, and who kissed them on the mouth. Then these reindeer carried Gerda and Kay to the Finn woman. They warmed themselves in her hot room, and when she had given them directions for their journey home, they rode on to the Lap woman. She had made them new clothes, and was ready to take them along in her sleigh. Side by side, the reindeer ran with them to the limits of the North Country, where the first green buds were to be seen. Here they said goodbye to the two reindeer and to the lap woman. Farewell, they all said. Now the first little birds began to chirp, and there were green buds all around them in the forest. Through the woods came riding a young girl on a magnificent horse that Gerda recognised, for it had once been harnessed to the golden carriage. The girl wore a bright red cap on her head and a pair of pistols in her belt. She was the little robber girl who had grown tired of staying at home and who was setting out on a journey to the North Country. If she didn't like it there, why, the world was wide and there were many other places where she could go. She recognised Gerda at once, and Gerda knew her too. It was a happy meeting. You're a fine one for gadding about, she told little Kay. I'd just like to know whether you deserve to have someone running to the end of the earth for your sake. But Gerda patted her cheek, and asked her about the prince and the princess. They're travelling in foreign lands, the girl told her. And the crow? Oh, the crow is dead, she answered. His tame lady love is now a widow, and she wears a bit of black wool wrapped around her leg. She takes great pity on herself, but that's all stuff and nonsense. Now, tell me what has happened to you, and how you caught up with Kay. Gerda and Kay told their story. Snip, snap, snur, basilura said the robber girl, so everything came out all right. She shook them by the hand and promised that if ever she passed through their town, she would come to see them, and then she rode away. Kay and Gerda held each other by the hand, and as they walked along, they had wonderful spring weather. The land was green and strewn with flowers. Church bells rang, and they saw the high steeples of a big town. It was the one where they used to live. They walked straight to Grandmother's house, and up the stairs, and into the room, where everything was just as it was when they had left it. And the clock said, tick-tock, and its hands were telling the time. But the moment they came in the door, they noticed one change. They were grown up now. The roses on the roof looked in at the open window, and their two little stools were still out there. Kay and Gerda sat down on them, and held each other by the hand. Both of them had forgotten the icy, empty splendour of the Snow Queen's palace, as completely as if it were some bad dream. Grandmother sat in God's good sunshine, reading to them from her Bible. Except ye become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kay and Gerda looked into each other's eyes, and at last they understood the meaning of their old hymn. Where the roses bloom so sweetly in the vale, there shall you find the Christ child without fail. And they sat there, grown up, but children, still children at heart. And it was summer, warm, glorious summer. And that was The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Now that that story's over, we get to pick another. Mm, that's lots of them. This one is it's another famous one. It's The Princess on the Pea, which is also by Hans Christian Andersen. I hope you've enjoyed that. Comment below, let me know what you made of the story. If you've got any recommendations of fairy tales or suggestions or requests for things you'd like to hear me read in the future, let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to follow me around the internet, I've got a link in the description to my Patreon page where you can support me if you would like to, and there's a link to my Goodreads page, and we can keep up to date with each other on what books are good and being read. Um, I think I think that's it from me. I'll see you next week.
Bye-bye.